there was a period of time of uh, about eight hours when Russo just went off grid, which is rare for him. And uh, I called him like, what, are you alive? Are you in an ER? Where are you? Um, and he was actually just in New York and he had sweated out this fever dream of a first draft of Stucco. Our cinematographer is Kui Yen Tran. She is a legend in the making. Mark my words. So Zeiss reached out to me about potentially shooting a project to showcase their new lenses, the Supreme Primes, and I was very flattered and honored, and of course I was interested in doing it. When we were in our pre-production meetings, we found out we had access to the Red Monstro, and pairing that with the Supreme Prime is something that hasn't been done many times. The lens communicates directly with the camera. So when you're talking about VFX shots and when you are shooting something like that, then you don't need any extra box or GAC or any of that stuff. It's seamless and it makes the entire process faster and smarter. And so with this system, with the Monstro and the Supreme Primes, we were able to get all the lens data information onto the negative, which is really exciting, especially when you're working with VFX, because it'll record the focal length, the distance, the, the T-stop, the height, everything, which is really cool, which means that on set, we have more time to light and to focus on other things. So Janina and Russo presented a lookbook to me, which included a lot of images. And so I really took those images and ran with it. I took a frame and I said, this is exactly the, like the shot from our lookbook. And she was like, huh? Oh yeah, okay. Q has a rock star DIT named Michael Romano. He was doing live grading right there. He took a reference still and in two clicks, he had already matched color. I really believe in trying to build the look into the CDL. Um, of course, the raw information is always there and we can always go back. However, I always try to build that look as close to the final look as possible. The Supreme Primes are beautiful lenses, first of all. I loved shooting with them. They're so clean. There's not a lot of breathing and um, they really created a beautiful, smooth look that I'm really pleased with. So I've shot large format in the past and one of the reasons why I love it so much is because it sees the world in a different way. You can really shoot a close-up but have more context. In the short, the house is trying to engulf her, is trying to swallow her, literally. And so it was important for us to show that relationship of the protagonist to the house, which led us to shoot these wider lenses close to her so that you could see all that depth behind her and feel the house. Um, and I think shooting the large format really lended itself to the narrative. We're sort of trained not to look at the things that make us uncomfortable. And I think our job as artists is to examine it fearlessly. Um, Russo and I love slow burn 70s horror. We love practical effects. And I think some of my favorite shots were with the tongue. How can we make this feel cool and sexy, but also weird? So Thingergy took care of props. They took care of art direction and makeup and practical effects. Having this lens data is pretty phenomenal because we get like everything from the lens. There's a lot of times I don't get a lot of that lens data. Depending on what you're trying to do, especially for a shot that's tracking or you know, you're adding elements in, you need to undistort the lens, especially if it's a wide lens. Like if it's 24 mil, we all know that that's pretty distorted. And it also has shading characteristics on the outside. What I like to do is look at the clip in Nuke, and then I click on the unshade and undistort nodes. And then you just see it unshade along the edges and undistort along the edges. And for some weird reason, I really like that. It makes me feel good inside, just knowing that that tool exists. At the beginning of this, this short film, we would just take the R3D file and use that directly in Nuke. Uh, but then when eFilm started uh, injecting the metadata into OpenEXRs, that was really nice because we could have 4K poles, uh, but still have all that metadata within uh, the clip itself. You know, it's really cool to be like part of this process with Zeiss and, and trying out new technology. I'm the child of an engineer, so I'm inspired by technology. You know, the only way to forge forward in a medium is to try everything, you know. And I, I just feel really lucky that we've been able to do that with us and Red. <laughs>